Hello, and welcome to this video all about module eight of my new course, Open Portal, a self-paced online course all about how to work with anxiety through the body. Now, in this module, we're gonna talk about relationships. So what's happening on a nervous system, body level, when we're relating to one another, how anxiety can make relating difficult or, or challenging, and some of the embodied ways that we can start to shift that. Now in Module 2, we talked about three main nervous system responses that we have to threat, danger, or stress. So the fight, flight, and freeze. So these are the oldest nervous system responses we have that are designed to keep us out of mortal danger. Either keep us out of danger or significantly reduce the amount of pain that we feel if we can't escape. There's a more recently developed part of our nervous system called the social engagement system, which is designed to help us co-regulate with one another and be in relationship, which is essential to the survival of us as mammals. So the term social engagement system was made popular through polyvagal theory, which is a theory um, developed by psychiatrist and researcher Dr. Stephen Porges. So the social engagement system, part of our nervous system, helps us to determine whether relating to someone or being in a certain social situation is safe or dangerous based on the cues of facial expression, gesture, um, prosody or vocal intonation, um, wh what we're physically surrounded by, noise, etc. So when we're in a heightened, hyper-aroused state of fight or flight, or when we're in a hypo-aroused or shut-down state of freeze, it can be difficult to, um, to sense true safety or danger through the social engagement system. And there are many contributing factors to why our social engagement system might be a little bit out of balance or out of sync with our reality. And this could be because of certain particular traumas. This could be because of how we were raised or our attachment styles. And so there are a number of reasons why we might interpret certain behaviors as safe or dangerous. So I want to talk about two of the major ways that I've seen in my own life and in the lives of other people that I've worked with who have anxiety, how we respond in relationships. The first one is to become enmeshed with another person. So that means collapsing parts of yourself or needs that you have in order to attend to the needs, um, the thoughts, the feelings, the needs of someone else. So in essence, it feels safer on a nervous system level to ignore parts of yourself or to attend solely to those needs in order for you to experience uh, safety and connection. And the other major response would be detachment. So avoiding empathetic connection, um, avoiding to some degree avoiding conflict, um, not asking for help, or relying solely on yourself. And I know on, in, in various times in my life and in various contexts, I've sort of flip-flopped between those two. So in the course, I'm going to show you some embodied ways of moving away from enmeshment, reclaiming yourself, and also engaging with empathetic connection when you feel you're in more of that detached or maybe avoidant place. Call upon the tools that we've developed so far in the previous modules for self-regulation to help us uh, feel more equipped inside of relationship and when we are attempting to co-regulate. And we'll explore some journaling practices that help us get more to the root of where our relational anxiety might be coming from and how we can put it into perspective. So that's it for today. If you'd like to join the waitlist for Open Portal, which will be closing soon, um, please visit the link in my bio. It's down below if you're on YouTube. So in our next and final video, we'll look at the relationship between society, community, and anxiety. Thanks for watching, and I will see you again soon.